For more on the conflict, a security expert, Kaj Ononuju, joins me via Skype from Abuja. Um, good to have you join us, uh, Kaj Ononuju. It's been really sad to look at how the tension between Israel and Palestine has been escalating in the past five days. Um, talk to us about what you make of this. Uh, thank you for having me. Well, I believe these problems are there simply because the world has failed to pay more attention to the problem in the Middle East. All through the time of the Trump administration, uh, nothing was done to bring peace. Instead, we were engaged in maneuvers to give advantage only to Israel. Now, we seem to be ripping that particular mistake which we made. I believe the crisis simply forces us to bring more attention to that place and to continue the peace process in the way it was before the Trump administration started eight outside maneuvers of trying to get Israel and force the Arab neighbors to go into peace without caring about also winning the peace with the Palestinians who live in today's Israel. I believe we must now wake up to try to solve those issues which we did not solve before. Absolutely. Uh, we saw the peace agreement between um, Saudi Arabia, Israel, um, the UAE and Israel, but there was never really any uh, peace meeting between uh, uh, brokered by the Trump administration between Palestinians and Israel. And now um, Hamas, which a senior official of Hamas is saying that the group is ready for reciproc a reciprocal ceasefire. But Israel has also stated that that can only happen by um, Israel taking out Hamas, uh, military, their military structure and command and control. When you listen to that statement coming from Israel, do you think that a ceasefire is, is in the wake anytime soon? Uh, well, what you're seeing, it's a reoccurrence that looks like an annual ritual in that period. I believe the current crisis should simply tell us that the way we try to use brinkmanship to get the Arab neighbors to make peace with Israel without involving the Palestinians in what we're doing has failed. I also believe that the strategy the Israelis intend to put there is simply to use overwhelming force to hold land and then use the military might they have to force the Palestinians to simply leave with that which Israelis believe the Palestinians cannot change. I think this is a very wrong approach. And the current crisis seems to have now brought us back to understand that that strategy is not working. Um, the big, you just highlighted one of the biggest issue, one of the big issues for people in terms of proportional response, um, especially as civilian lives are being lost every day. But I, I want to call your attention to um, a statement from the Israeli military saying that about 7,000 army reservists has been called, um, has been called. And now uh, it also said that it could, we could see an offensive, a ground offensive into Gaza in the coming days. Um, you are seeking for diplomatic uh, an approach to prevent war through uh, diplomacy. But if that happens, if, if there was to be an Israeli ground offensive in Gaza, uh, could diplomacy avert a war? Well, what you're trying to say is that Israel is thinking of sustaining their previous plan. A total occupation will probably, with time, force the Palestinians into despair. That's what they're looking to to probably take back Gaza. They think that allowing Hamas to keep that thing is wrong and that they now should go on and fully reoccupy. Because in Israeli calculations, the idea to allow the Palestinians to have a quasi-autonomous control over the West Bank and Gaza uh, is not working. So probably what they think they will do is to hold it down, occupy it for a longer period, and then surgically remove, as you have seen, the places that they have been bombed, which through the intelligence they gathered, are the office places of the leaders of Hamas. So they probably want now to go on the ground, seize control of those places, take control of the land, and try to instrument the same coordination that they had 
when they had total control and the Palestinians had nowhere to actually call their own place to govern. That's where Israel is going. But wouldn't that lead to an outright war? Could diplomacy avert a war if that were to happen? Well, I don't see a war. What you see is exactly what the Palestinians wanted to uh, the, the world to see. War is when you have uh, a you know, conflict between two armies or with one army. What you have now is an insurgent group. That's what the Palestinians have become. So they probably want to use that their inter a, a interfather insurgency to force more emotional reactions from the world so that we can concentrate and understand that that which we did not do uh, during the days when Trump thought he's uh, trying to force a friendship for Israel by the Arab allies that he already had economically coaxed to come into the American table will work. We are now beginning to see that, yes, those things may have a temporary success, but on the long term, we need peace that involves the Israelis and the Palestinians. And that's why we are suddenly back to where we were before. And talking about peace that involves the, um, the Israeli and Palestinians, is, the U.S. is sending an envoy to Israel to try and uh, push for de-escalation. Uh, there is no record of such a meeting uh, between Israeli and uh, U.S. envoy and Palestinians because of issues of credible leadership in, in Palestine. So how, how beneficial do you think that this meeting will be between the U.S. envoy and Israel? Uh, I don't think that way the credible leadership comes up. And people will get the kind of leadership they deserve based on their reaction, as you saw here in Nigeria, based on the reaction of the people, the governors react, based on the reaction of the Palestinians, the leaders react. So you have seen members of the PLO there and also, of course, members of Hamas. What we now need to do is to restart that old arrangement which was stopped when Mr. Trump came in there. Yes, Mr. Biden understands that because it's been part of the U.S. foreign policy decisions for over three decades. Let us hope that Mr. Biden brings his wealth of experience to try to kickstart again the peace process within that region. You're seeing Arab reactions to events that have occurred in that area since 1948. Now that the world understands that despite the differences in diversity of religion, the people in that region belong together. Whether you are an Arab or and you are a Jew or you are a Christian, you are the same. It's just the differences in occupation of Jerusalem, which has happened since from creation to now about 13 times, that makes us to take sides based on religion. I believe the world must see that particular region as people who are of the same heritage. There might be differential in their faith, but they belong together. And we must start right now to try to help them to get to live in peace with each other. Because as you can see, nobody can remove anybody from that area. They are there and they've experienced returns. Let's make it possible that as more people go back to Israel to become Israelis, that they'll be able to coexist peacefully with the Arabs who were there after Israel was exposed and then its new creation in 1948. Let us walk towards harmony in that region going forward. And we'll see how the meeting between the U.S. envoy and the Israeli leadership, um, how that leads to um, lasting peace. Uh, security expert Kash Onoduju, thanks for talking to us. Thank you for having me.